grown up as a Liverpool supporter for the, like the last 15 years now I've been a Liverpool supporter there has only been one player playing for my club that I would ever consider an idol it was a player that I watched from when I began watching Liverpool at, from 2004 to the day uh, where he left in 2015, went on to LA Galaxy and since then has gone into management. Yes, I am talking about Steven Gerrard, as you can see by the top left hand side of your screen, I guess. Um, what we're going to be doing today, guys, and what we're going to be doing for this series is we are going to be following Steven Gerrard's managerial career i guess uh starting with rangers who he took charge of a year ago um and since then has had his first season in charge of rangers obviously one of the biggest football clubs uh, football yeah football clubs in scotland um he has been in charge of 60 games in real life and he has won 32 so he's he's won over half of his games which is uh, fantastic obviously second place um behind celtic Hopefully next season they can close the gap. But ever since Steven uh, has been appointed as Rangers I, manager, I have actually followed them. And I want to celebrate that by doing this series for you guys. Steven Gerrard is my idol and we are going to be following him through his managerial career like I've already said. But anyway, let's begin. In today's first episode we will be setting up our career, maybe doing a few transfers and playing our first league game which... Who was it against actually? Oh, didn't mean to go into other leagues. Um, our first league game, I think it's away to Aberdeen. Oh no, it's away to Kilmark. And I, I knew it was away because I remember seeing it live when it was on TV at the start of the season. But yeah, we're going to be playing one game today and each episode we want to play two or three games. But because it's the first um, episode, we do want to be uh, setting it up and maybe doing a few transfers. But anyway, let's get into it. The first thing that we notice is the expectations and targets for the season and as you can uh, tell by that it's pretty self-explanatory uh, in a Scottish Premiership we want to be winning the league title we want to be dethroning the mighty Celtic and in the Scottish Cup we want to be reaching at least the semi-finals my target personally is I want to win everything possible so I want to win the Scottish Cup but then we go on to continental success obviously we're in the Europa League um, and we, our target is simply just to reach the knockout stages of the competition. In our group, I believe we have Villarreal, we have um, Rapid Vienna. Who's the other team? I'll check in just a second. But other things, we want to be aiming to um, have a profit margin of at least 17.6 uh, million. And brand exposure, sign a, a one crucial first team player signed to a midfield or forward position and gain at 10 million uh, pounds there and thereabouts in shirt sales okay so if we sign someone with a big name that will go towards shirt sales because the fans will be wanted to buy the shirt with their name on the back and the youth development i'm not too fussed about okay as you can see there spot at moscow are the third and final well third and technically fourth team in um group g of our europa league it's going to be an interesting one um rangers unfortunately finished I think the uh, Rangers finished third in the group. I think it was like pretty much as it is right now. Um, but we'll be looking to do one better and get through to the knockout stages of the Europa League. And progress as far as we can because even though Rangers or Scottish teams in general don't have the best teams. They can still compete to, to a slight degree um, in Europe. So that is good. The next thing I wanted to do was um, quickly look at the team and change it to how I want to have it set up. I did just make it like go from 4-3-2-1 to another 4-3-2-1. You may have just seen it. But anyway, let's have a look at our starting lineup. So Alfredo Morelos is um, like one of the biggest names of this Rangers team. He's been in the headlines quite a bit this season because he has obviously had a very good goal scoring season. I think going on towards like 30 goals this season. But he's also got like five red cards this season, which is crazy. But anyway, we will be looking to utilise him with uh, the backup um, strike force of Jermaine Defoe on loan from Sunderland. And we also have Kyle Lafferty, who was signed from Hearts, I believe, um, back at uh, Rangers for the second or even third time. I, I don't actually know. So on the right, we have Candeus. Um, yeah, I'm happy to keep him as the 
that choice. It's it got, it got good pace and good stamina. That is what I like to see from a winger. Scott Arfield, you're not going to be playing on the wing, mate. Who we got? We've got Ryan Kent on loan from Liverpool. I'm going to be using him. You may notice on a few players, I've kind of altered their uh, stamina because really they are quite low normally. So I've just upped it. So it's not overpowered way he's going to be playing every game but it's enough way he's like can see out a full 90 minutes at least um so that is pretty good so ryan kent is our first choice left winger for now obviously we might be bringing in a winger or two it's but we'll, we'll see what we've got available to us right now midfield three uh ryan jack is a very good player um he's got 91 stamina which i haven't altered he's actually got that um a player that gerard really does like in real life um so he is going to be our CDM or central centre mid in this formation. We've got Stephen Davis on loan from Southampton. I've upped his stamina slightly because he's quite an old player. Um, I want him to play quite a bit still. And then our third and final one, I think we are going to go for Scott Arfield, who's actually had a very good season um, at Rangers. So he that midfield three is fairly good to be fair and the front three are decent. At left back, we've got John Flanagan, an ex-Liverpool player, obviously like Kent is. Obviously, Kent's a current one, but he's on loan this season. John Flanagan, I've upped his stamina because, to be fair, when he did play for us in like the 13-14 season, where it was actually quite a regular feature at left back or right back, um, he did actually have great stamina. So I just put that there because full backs, for me, I want them to be pushing up and putting in crosses and stuff. And then on the other side, we have the captain, James Tavernier, or Tavernier. Um, I've upped his stamina slightly, only slightly though, because I think it's actually 90, 91. I've just upped it so it's the same as John Flanagan. And uh, like that pace is real. Um, very good uh, player. He's got good uh, free kick. Um, he's got good penalty. I think he scored or scored and assisted over 20 goals this season from right back that's fantastic centre backs we've got Katic and um, Golton both of them actually have decent pace into the 70s um, or it, well Golton on on the cusp of 70 but ve very decent centre back pairing I'm happy with that and we've got Alan McGregor a veteran um, here at uh, Rangers he's still got some decent uh, goalkeeper stats so I'm going to use him this season and then uh, we've got Fodderingham at uh, as a backup keeper, we've got Joe Worrell on loan from Nottingham Forest, who I'm a big fan of. Actually, we've also got um, Glenn McCauley, um, ex Lincoln player. Obviously, I'm from Lincoln. Um, doesn't have great stats, um, I won't lie. <laughs> is he's got decent stamina, which I think I upped, but is look at his speed 29 and 31. So, overall, his pace is 30, which is pretty bad but we've got two backup centre backs um, when needed and when called upon they can be used Koulibaly and uh, Doran's on the bench maybe actually no I'm gonna I'll say Kamara maybe Doran's I, like, I know he's been here a long time but I, I feel like potentially he could be moved on as you know you know what we are going to keep him we are going to keep him and he's going to be on the bench I, I was contemplating that we've got Defoe and Lafferty as two striker options and we've got a winger we've got Jacob Murphy right there so to be fair the squad's not bad I do realise that Rangers and Scottish teams in general don't have big budgets so it's important to use what I've got in this um, season like obviously what Stephen has used obviously he's added to the squad he brought in Ryan Kent he brought in John Flanagan uh, he brought in Goldson, did he? I, I'm not too sure. I, I I don't know. But anyway, let's sort out our custom tactics. And I always like to use it on uh, pressure on heavy touch. And I kind of like to have them quite balanced, where there's just four four bars. I it just works for me, I guess. Instructions wise for players, I want my wingers to get in behind, so I'm going to switch them to that. And also my central centre mid, I want them to stay back while attacking. So they are kind of like a holding midfielder role, and that is going to be Ryan Jack there and then rolls you know what i'm happy for james tavernier to um like assume every role because he is the captain he does take free kicks and penalties and he, he might as well take corners as well actually do i want him on corners do i really want my right back on corners you know what i i am going to keep it and so we have saved that the next thing that I want to be sorting out uh, for the season is who I want to train up. So I can choose five players each week, but I always kind of like for the for a season to uh, choose the f like five same 
players um, and just like increase them um, as I will. So first one is going to be Alfredo Morelos. He's only 22 years of age, so we're going to work on his. It'll be working on his sprint speed and his finishing, which is going to be very good. Um, the next player that I want to be working on is Ryan Kent. I know he's on loan, uh, but I want to use utilize him as much as possible in this season before he goes back to Liverpool. Uh, next player, I want to be uh, training up Brian Jack um, a bit more. I know he's 26 and he's not like prime like youth to um, to like improve, but I think I can improve him quite a bit. Uh, the next one I want is Katic. He's only 21 years of age. He's six foot four, so he could be a beast at centre back. And then our final one, who do we want? I f it's either Taverni uh, Tavernier or Flanagan. You know what? No, I I've chosen someone else. So I I will be right back. And we are back. And the reason why I backed out of that um, is because I've recalled. Um, Jordan Rossiter he was on loan at Berry, I want to say and he is going to be used this season for me he has all right stats like 71 stamina so he is going to be our final player because he is nice and young and we're also going to work him like um, Ryan Jack in that like holding midfielder role so he's going to be on adept defending scenarios so there are five players and what I like to do is just simulate them I don't actually like to each week actually do them so it looks like uh, Morales had a bad week's training uh, Ryan Kent, on the other hand, had the best possible, so he progressed uh, more than uh, most. So, the next thing that I am going to do is go onto my squad and see who I want to get rid of. Okay, so here we are on the squad, and we're going to see, go down the list and see if there's anyone I want to get rid of. The keepers I'm kind of happy with. We can have a young keeper as a backup, backup if needed, but I think McGregor and um, Fodderingham are uh, decent. To be fair, I'm pr I don't know whether to use Alan McGregor as my first choice. He is 36. Or do I try and buy in a young keeper? I might have a look at young keepers and then decide on that. Two right backs. Let's see what Polster's like as a backup. He's got 90 stamina, but he is slow. So we'll we'll see about him. But you know what? For the first season, I'm happy to use him. Like I've already said, we've got four centre backs in Katic, Warrell, Goldson, and McCauley. So I'm happy with that. Um, Jesus, how many left backs do we want? Flanagan's going to be my first joint. Um, Barisic, I believe, is new in, so we're going to keep hold of him. Halliday, even though you've got good stamina, I'm going to get rid of you. And Wallace, also, I'm going to get rid of you. So we've got two left backs. Ryan Jack's going to stay. McCory actually has very nice stats. 20 years of age. Like, decent pace, decent stamina. I'm going to keep hold of him. Rossiter, obviously, we've recalled from Berry, so he's going to be in our squad. Stephen Davis is on loan from Southampton, so he's staying. Scott Arfield, like, he's staying. Uh, Glenn Kamara, he's staying because I can't get rid of him. Dorans, I I feel like I should just keep. I, I really like having players on FIFA that I've got out your face, and he, even, he's only 31. I thought he was a bit older than that, so that's fine. Koulibaly, he is on loan, and he's going to stay. He's got decent stats. Um, Kandeas, I didn't actually realise he's 30 years of age, but he is going to stay because he has some very good stats to use this season. Uh, and we've got our three strikers. We're happy with them. Uh, Middleton is young, and he's got decent stats except for his stamina, but I could work on that. Gresda, I believe, has just joined. Jacob Murphy, I'm going to keep. Um, and Ryan Kent, I'm going to keep. So really, I'm not really listing anyone up, which is good. I'm just going to add a couple of names or a few names to this current crop of players and see how I do. So the next time you see me, I am going to just like quickly make up a short list of some players I might be interested in. Then we can start bidding on them. So back in a sec. Before I um, go into the shortlist which I've just created, I just want to quickly um, avert your attention to what our budgets are this season. I think the start was like 6 um, or 7 mil and I've added the 60% uh, bonus because I'm a return in career mode user uh, from previous FIFAs. Um, so we have about 11 mil plus we've got 88,000 um, pounds in uh, wage budget which is actually very good because I don't think any of the players are on huge budget, uh, huge wages that I'm currently after. But that is what our budget is, and with that in mind, I d have created a bit of a shortlist. So I did say that I wanted to look at maybe uh, bringing in another keeper, a younger keeper, um, because we've got Fodderingham, who's 27, I believe, and we've got um, 
McGregor, who's like 36. Um, so here's a couple of like cheap keepers I can think of. So there's Jack Rose from um, Southampton, and we have Carl Darlow, um, a backup keeper from Newcastle. It'll be interesting to see how much they're worth um, because none of them have their like scout report back. So, but I'm just going to show you the shortlist now before we start bidding. I want to get all the scout reports back and then look at them in more detail before deciding on. Um, I did pro uh, actually think to try and bring in a backup right back um, to uh, Tavernier, and Yann Valerie is the one that I thought of in my mind. Should be quite cheap from Southampton as well as Rose, um, so we can have a look at him. Um, centre back uh, options obviously we don't have the quickest backup ones I don't know actually how quick Worrell is but he's only on loan so I might look to invest in a youthful one so young Welsh um, defender Ampadu um, it could be an option quite cheap um, centre mid I do want to bring in probably one more centre mid just to like uh, beef it up and try and get someone that's got a bit of stamina and I do know that Danny Williams does have about 86 uh, stamina should be quite cheap as well um, 29 years of age so he would go straight into that into the first team I'm pretty sure um, and then I wanted to get some creative midfielders so I went for uh, Ben Woodburn and Casey Palmer who uh, like, I'm probably going to get Ben Woodburn I, I know him very well on this game I've used him so much he get he go, becomes an amazing player so uh, I'm probably going to get Ben Woodburn obviously bringing like uh, bringing that link in still between Liverpool and Rangers obviously Gerrard and Liverpool have that connection as well Casey Palmer just another option it'll be interesting to see how cheap he is but he is a good player I, I do like Casey Palmer I'm also looking at Daniel James who in real life has just signed for Manchester United for about fifteen million pounds. Um I don't I haven't seen much of him. All I do know is he is very quick. I believe his pace on fever is around the ninety mark, which could be good as a backup or even a starting winger, depending on the hook who we're playing and um, how I want to play but I think it's a good option um, and another player I decided to go for uh, or have a look at is uh, Tahif uh, Chong who is a young um, player from Manchester United uh, look at that hair though it, like I just want him for the hair six foot one winger four star four star very nice got very good sprint speed and agility it says from the summary and it'll be interesting and then I was thinking do I want to bring in another striker? Maybe Carl Lafferty maybe won't be good. So I'm going to be looking at Fernando Torres. I do have a scout report for him, so I know exactly what his stats are like. Um, the problem with Fernando is it says the player has recently joined the club and won't move again. So potentially in January, if we have money, I, I would like to bring in Fernando. Have that uh, like link up, at least, between Gerard and uh, Torres. Obviously, Gerard's not going to be a pitch, but it's nice. To, it would be really nice to bring in Fernando Torres before he retires in the game. But yeah, this is the shortlist. Obviously, what I'm going to be doing now is progressing forward until I've got all the scout reports when we can start bidding on players. In that time, we might be progressing where I do a bit more training on the five players that I've shown you earlier. But anyway, I will see you in a second. Okay, um, we have been interrupted in this progression because we have um, received a bid from Middlesbrough for Alfredo Morelos. The first, this is what I'm going to do because I don't want to sell him, is I'm just going to press triangle and it's going to block all offers from this season. So anyway, let's get back to progressing. Okay, we have now received a bid for Tavernier and Wallace. Wallace, I'm happy to let go because he is listed. Um, but Tavernier, again, I'm going to block it. Since then, I have actually also blocked a a loan move um, from Malaga for Roster because he's a player I really want to use. Again, the next day, we have another bid, and this one's from Al Halil, or Hilal, uh, um, for Ryan Jack. That's an interesting one, but again, I'm going to block it because it's a player I really want to use. Okay, what I have done is um, progress a, about a week or two more, and I actually got a bid for Graham Dorans in from his old club, West Brom, and I thought, you know what, it's a decent bid, I'm just going to accept it, and uh, he has now been sold. I also got a couple more bids for Halliday, but he, he seems to, like, reject all of them. But anyway, we should have everyone now fully scouted which we do so now we can actually start choosing who we want to start bidding on the first player I am going to bid on is young Daniel James obviously like I've already said he has now signed in real life for Manchester United and 
I'm actually going to have a good look at him and see if he is a player that would intrigue me. His current value is 3.6 million. So that's something we're going to take into consideration. Uh, who should we try and offer? Is there anyone that... You know what, this Grezka, uh, uh, Grezda, I don't really want to look up. Four mil? Why would you... Why do you want so much? Can we go two mil? They want three mil plus Grezda. Can we go 2.2? .2? I don't know why the music actually turns up. Oh, 2.25. You know what? I'm happy to accept that, you know. We've got the money from Doran, so we can just afford it and still have about 10 mil spare. So let's quickly negotiate this one um, and try and get Daniel James in. But yeah, I don't know why the music turns up. I have the music down on low. Important first team player. He must have gone up a rating. I think he started at 70 rating, so because he's 71, they want maybe a bit more from it. 13k wages. You know what? I've got plenty of wages. I'm happy to accept that. If you're happy to accept that, 14 and a half. You know what? It's still worth. You're a young Welsh wizard. So that is good. So as you can see by there, we have brought in Daniel James. I'm going to sort out kit numbers once I've like signed everyone that I'm happy with. Um, this summer and then we can sort out the team the next person I'm gonna go for is another Welshman another Welsh wizard and that is Ben Woodburn I think it would be nice to bring in Woodburn and Daniel James um, two Welsh uh, players even though this is Scotland it doesn't really matter so who can I offer I'm kind of tempted to offer Lafferty because I just don't think I'll use him with um, I don't know do I you know what, I'm, I'm going to try to keep Lafferty, actually. Is there anyone that I can get rid of? So, Ross McCrory uh, ha has decent stats, but I don't think I'm going to use all these centre mids. Okay, they want a centre back, full back, or a striker. Okay, I could offer Halliday. You know what, Halliday would be good because I'm, I keep having bids for him, but he keeps rejecting them. I think he would... Never turn down the opportunity to go to Liverpool. Let's be honest. So let's submit that. Hopefully we can get it to, to about a mil. You know what? 2% selling clause, that's fine. I'm, I don't have any intention of selling them. So we are going to try and bring in Ben Woodburn to add to Daniel James, who we signed two minutes ago, maybe. Okay, well, we want him kind of on rotation. I think rotation would be better. Okay, that's good. So let's go five-year deal. He only wants two-year deal. Okay, we can get that up to a three-year deal because they always like to negotiate one or one year less or one year more. Decent wages. That is fantastic wages. Let's get him in. He's happy to. He's looking forward to the opportunity to work in with Steven Gerrard. So as you can see there, we now have Ben Woodburn who looks very nice in Rangers kit, and Daniel James who looks very nice. In a Rangers kit. So you know what? Let's try and make it a trio of Welsh players, and let's go for Ampardo as just um, just as a backup centre back. Him and maybe Mac um, McCauley, maybe um, like alternating. It depends. I I'm not. I'm not too sure yet. But um, we could technically offer someone like McCauley, but I'm not too sure. Probably not. What who we got that we could offer? You know what? I, I'm I'm just gonna go straight in at like 800k. I know that's less than his value, but it'll be interesting to see. So see, look, his transfer sum is less than his actual value. So that's why he always start a tiny bit lower. I wonder if Ampardi's wages are quite high just because he's at Chelsea. But it'll be interesting to see. So he's 65 rated. So hopefully we can get him on a sporadic. Um, deal which we can he's got excellent hair beautiful hair five-year deal three-year deal so we can get up to a four-year deal so I'm not gonna complain of that good young talent so that will get him to the age of only 21 which is crazy uh, let's accept that so he's only only on 7k wages so with that being said you know what? I'm happy to offer him 10k wages he's happy with that so we have just completed the trio signing of three excellent Welsh players, very young Welsh players. 
So that is going to be key. Like I, I think I'm, I'm very happy with those three signings. So the next um, position I'd like to go for is probably uh, my right back position because that means that we've got uh, Tavernier and Valerie potentially. He's got great wages, only only four four k, and it says between eight hundred eighty k to one point three mil. So let's go for him. I kind of want to get all the transfers done now um instead of wait a few days because we've got all the reports back we could just go for it uh you know what can we offer polster we can that's good you know what i'm happy to go with 584 it means what we have that right back which i wasn't too sure about off the books and then we bring in Yang, uh, Yan valerie as our backup option to james tavernier or tavernier i don't know what's the best way of saying it you, you guys in the comments will have to let me know uh we should be able to get him on the spread it because he's 66 rated it means that we have no quarrels if we don't have to play him can we get him on a five-year deal no he, he'll have to be on a three-year deal like ben woodburn uh, signed, but it, that's, it's fair enough. It's fair enough. Okay, so let's accept that and let's see if we have. Okay, can we just offer him like 5k? Oh, no, not 50k. You know what? I'll offer him 6k, so it's n nearly like 2k over. And he is happy with that. That is very nice. So we have four players in. Do I go for Jack Rose? Carl Darlow is worth a bit. He's not actually as good a rating as um, McGregor, but because he's a lot younger, I'm tempted just to go for him. Actually, I, I kind of want to go for Williams first. Okay, to be fair, Casey Palmer wouldn't actually cost too much if I went for him, and neither would Chong. The thing is, with Daniel Williams, he has a bit more wages. But like I was saying, I did say that he had like 86 stamina, so, and I think that he would just be a very good player. Obviously, he's not going in line with what we've signed so far, which is youth, but this is going to be a seasoned pro um, from Huddersfield to come in. Can I buy you for like one... Actually, no, you know what? Because we want to bring in another midfielder, I'm happy to let um, Glenn Kamara go. 25k on top. You know what? I'm delighted with that. Plus, when you um, actually part exchange players, it actually takes into consideration the wages again from the selling player. So, which when you sell a player normally, you don't get their wages. So this is actually better. Okay, he is 70 rated. Rotation is a push, but he's happy with that, you know. He realises he's coming to a football club where he's going to get first in football and it's one of the biggest in the country. Okay, so he wants 1k less wage, but he does want a bit of a sign bonus. That might go up. No, he's happy with that. 21k. See, I'm just getting through these straight away. So, my next thing is, do I go for Chong? I, I can realistically go for whoever I want. So, I'm going to try and go for Darlow. And I'm going to try and offer Alan McGregor in part exchange. Try and get his wages, plus obviously get McGregor easily off the books. So if I can do that, that'd be brilliant. I know he's only worth eight. Okay, so then don't want a keeper. Don't want a fullback, midfielder, or winger. Okay, let's have a look. See if we've got anyone. See, McCrory, am I really going to use? Because we've got Roster, Williams, Woodburn, Arfield, and Jack. And we've also got um, Davis. So I'm Even though he's young. Oh, okay. Maybe they don't want him. They don't want him. Okay, what about wingers? Of a position, what do we have? Wingers, but um, I kind of want to keep Jay Murphy Middleton. I know he's young. Oh, okay. Rafa don't want that. Okay, they're, they're looking for a full back. You know what? I'm just gonna offer money. Let's offer two and a half million for Carl Darlow. They think it's fair. Like, Rafa is a good man, he's working close with Stevie. That, like, obviously, they had success together, winning the FA Cup in 2006 and winning the Champions League in 2005. Yep, Carl Zalo, you are going to be an important player. You know what, I'm going to just go straight... Actually, no, I'll offer a five-year deal and see what he wants. I was going to just offer a three-year deal, which I thought was just going to get accepted, which clearly it is. Um, but anyway, let's carry on. We don't want to release clothes because they are something i'm not really looking at wages i'm kind of fine with that we've still got plenty of wages and we've got a decent bit of budget as well so i'm happy with that one so jack rose we can get rid of because we're not looking for that anymore casey palmer 
I am undecided on Casey so far. I'm actually kind of... I don't know. Do we need another midfielder? Chong I could use as... Well, actually, what's his stats like? I haven't really looked at his stats. Apparently he does get very good. I think I am going to go for him because I don't think we've got many wingers that I can think of. So I'm going to go straight in with a one mil bid. And they're happy with that. That's supposed to be Sol Solskjaer apparently. I'm going to sneeze. Oh, I think it's gone. Can we have you as a sporadic Chong? We can. Okay, five year deal. Nope, he wants a two year deal, but I'm going to give him a three year deal. Right, okay, okay, let's see. Okay, salary, I'm going to offer 15k. He is happy with that. Obviously, I'm buying young players, which it does mean that um, I'm going to have to resort my five training players to try and get my youngsters better. So I'll have a look at that afterwards. The one thing that like depends on this deal is if I can offer McCrory. Yeah, I can offer McCrory. That's good. Because I was going to say, I'm only going to bring in um, Palmer if I can get rid of McCrory. I, I know I'm butchering his name. Like I'm not se like selling the... Ah. Oh, um, I'm selling it short a bit but anyway let's bring it in a case of rotation is beautiful it means that I'm not under any real pressure to play you every match which is good four year deal that is one of the best ones we've done so far get rid of that let's get in the um, lovely wages and an extra 500 quid it, it doesn't matter and we have brought in a case of palmer so if we go on to sent offers we've actually pretty much got everyone that we had on the short list um barring obviously jack rose who we don't need um him and fernando torres who we can't sign at this present time hopefully in january i have enough money to actually buy fernando because i would really love to have him before he retires in the game um but if we look at our players we obviously just brought in palmer chong darlo uh, Williams, Valerie, and Pardew, Woodburn, and Daniel James. So next thing is, I am going to put them into the team, and I will see you right there. So this is the new and improved team. As you can see, we haven't done anything to the th uh, front fr uh, front three uh, I should say um, but that might change during the season but I've changed up the midfield quite a bit we have now got Williams on the right hand side of the central three and I've actually I'm actually going to start Woodburn I do realize that both Arfield and uh, Davis are high rated than both of them but I just feel that this is how I want to set up midfield three is very important to how I like to play Obviously nothing to the back four, but we brought in Carl Darlow as our first choice keeper. On the bench, I've brought in Ampardo for Worrell. Um, I've got Arfield on the bench. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put Davis on the bench instead of Arfield. Um, and we've got Case Palmer, we've got Daniel James, we've got Jacob Murphy, and we've got um, Jermaine Defoe. And then we've got a good selection of other players that could, uh, will get game time this season. We'll put him there. I'll put him there. You know, you know, honestly, I'm I'm fine with that. So, let's keep on progressing. Probably one of the last things to do before we progress fully up to the first game of the season is choose our now uh, choose our five players that we are, actually want to train this season. I don't know whether to keep on training Morella, so I'll try, I'll keep a I'll remember him to see if we've got spaces. But um, one of the first ones we want to do is Daniel James. Um, so he's going to be racing against the clock. He has no pace already, but it'll be int interesting to see how much further we can get that. I'm not too interested that in Chong right now in progressing him. Woodburn, we are definitely going to um, improve. Um, along with... Do we choose Palmer or Rossiter? I don't know. We'll see if there's spaces. And Pardew, I do want to improve. So at the moment, we've got the three Welsh players uh, that we want to improve. Um... Full backs with Valerie, I'm not too fussed. Uh, let's go with Rossiter. 
because I want to make him into a decent like, holding midfielder. He has been training, obviously, previously. And then, you know what? We are going to actually have um, Morelos. We're going to try and get him as good as possible. So to save that, I'm going to go press options and go into training presets, add a new preset, and I'm going to call it Youth. Um, I just always call it this. I know technically Morales isn't youth, but it means that if like um, I can, all I have to do is press a button and then it brings up these five straight away when I ever go on training. So that is very nice. So two of them got A's and three got B's. A very good week of training. But anyway, let's carry on progressing to the first game of the season. And here we are. We are on match day. First match day of the Scottish Premiership and we are away to Killy or Kilmarnock. Um, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be interesting to see what we're um, going to do. But before we do that, I am going to quickly sort out the squad numbers. But I'm going to do that off screen so you guys won't see that and do make a couple of changes. The next time you'll see me, we should be starting the game. So I will see you there. And here we are, the first game of the season, the first game of the series, the first game under the management of Steven Gerrard. And we are away at Kilmarnock. Let's get into it. Get out of white to Tavernia. You know, have a dig, have a dig. Oh, what a strike! The first shot of the game, and it's James Tavernier or Tavernier. I still don't know what to say, but I don't care. It, we are 1 0 up away at Kilmarnock. Very good play. Um, I don't know who played it out to Tavernier, but he had loads of space on the right wing. I think it was Woodburn who played out of there. Tavernier had um, to take aim, and he belts it into the back of the neck. 1 0. One thing I should say quickly, because we're only a few minutes of the game, I decided to start Daniel James on the left wing instead of Ryan Kent, just to mix things up a bit. But that is 1 0, and Steven Gerrard there on the sideline looks thrilled. Wait, lovely play. Woodburn's got it. Has he got the pace to get through? Oh, I don't think so. He'll have to cut back if he wants to put it across. That's fine though. No. Oh, to the back stick, but it's just too deep and Williams can't get hold of it. Comes to James. What can you do? What can you do? Gets into Woodburn. Woodburn hits it. Oh, it's just wide. I thought it was in. Very good play by Daniel James. Good ball across to Woodburn. Let's see how close this was. I'm sure it's very close. Oh, it's whiskers past that post. Woodburn. To Williams. Williams lines it up. Good shot, but good save by McDonald. Can he keep it in? And it goes out for a corner. And there is the half time whistle. Very dominant by Rangers in that first half. Kilmarnock not even registering a shot. But that early goal from the captain, James Tavernier, has really helped. And Carl Darlow hasn't had anything to do because his side has been dominant but anyway let's get into the second half and let's get our first three points of the season oh they've hit the post i really switched off then but carl Dolo has this first thing to do oh that was close from killy brian jack bringing it forward gives it to morelos gives it to williams sees daniel james that's a brilliant ball can he get it across to candeus yes he can it's 2-0 and candeus has his first goal of the season brilliant move from rangers from one end to the other from there like first shot of the game or first shots of the game i should say and that is a sucker punch and look at the fans of kelly they are distraught candeus gets his first goal what a ball this is from williams and then it's all down to the cross Daniel James gets it spot on and it's an easy tap in at the back post for Candeus. Tavernier brings it forward. Ryan Jack to Casey Palmer. Can he find the full back? Yes he can. Can he deliver the right ball? Cuts back. What a ball that is. And Jacob Murphy just off the bench has made it 3-0. For any of you wondering, we are on world class. So this should be quite difficult. But I guess Kilmarnock and Rangers, there's... Maybe not too much uh, to split him in real life, but on this game, Kilmarnock really haven't turned up. And Jacob Murphy, like I said, just off the bench. A no, uh, well, first assist for Tavernier this time. Goal and assist on the first game of the season. And it's a very simple header. But what a ball on his weaker foot from the captain. And it's simple as you like for Jacob Murphy. And it's 3-0 Rangers. Cuts inside. Can ping it. Yes, he can. 
Flanagan. Into the foe. Trying to find space. Gets out to the captain. You know what? He's got space to shoot again. Oh, it's just over. Another great bit of play. And Tavernier, I just love his movement. He gets forward so well. He's a, he's the epitome of an attacking fullback. Obviously, a goal and an assist in the first game of the season. Brilliant. Boyd with a header, but great save by Darlow. This should be the la final kick of the game, I would have thought. Darlow away from the resort corner. Defoe tries to head it or do something. But no, there is the final whistle, and it is an opening day victory for Steven Gerrard and his Rangers team against Kilmarnock. Very good game. Players, what I should highlight is obviously Tavernier at the uh, uh, right back. Obviously a goal and assist. Absolutely brilliant from the captain. Dallo didn't have much to do. Um, late header from Boyd, who, who we just shook hands with there. Defoe came on. Didn't really make much of an impact. Morales was quite quiet in that game, but obviously there'll be games where you'll fire them in and not. But Tavernier... Candeas and Murphy with the goals. Three actual Rangers players, so none of the um, new players got goals on their debuts, but that's a brilliant win. 3 0. And now we are back in the, the hub, so what I am going to do is wrap up today's episode. Um, if you guys have enjoyed this episode, be sure to smash that like button. It shows me that you're going to be showing support for this series. I'm going to try and record and um, ed edit and upload this um, every couple of days, I would have thought. So hopefully you stick around and wait for the next one. Leave comments down below of what you thought of today's episode. And until next time, guys, goodbye.